Shane Owen, Ford Sports. Uh, Nicola, what stands out to you about the matchup with Bam? And I guess what do you what do you see when you see him play and, and how that challenge is going to be in this series? I think it's not Bam against me or whatever. I guess well, I think it's a, it's a Denver against Miami, and uh, just because I think we kind of have a similar play style. We are we are getting everybody involved. We like to play with team basketball, so it's not going to be me against him or anybody against anybody. So it's going to be a Miami against a Denver, um, and I think that's why it's going to be interesting. Paulina, NBA Mexico, how was the wait for you and the team to get to know your rival? And was this an advantage or a disadvantage for you? Well, we're going to see tomorrow. Uh, but yes, we were waiting. We were, we were, but I think we, we, we took a good, uh, good uh, professional uh, approach to the, those eight days, nine days, ten days, whatever it was. Uh, you know, just because it's actually a long break and uh, you know, I think we did a good job. Uh, we stay in the shape, getting ready, uh, staying sharp, but still get enough rest. I, uh, but about the opponent, we're gonna see tomorrow. Is that true or I'm lying? In every defense and handled every wrinkle that's come your way. And you were just talking about you have the ball in your hands a lot. You have to make decisions. If Miami throws a zone at you, what, what, how does that impact your decision making? How does that affect your handoffs of Jamal and your passing lanes? Uh, my friend, we're gonna see tomorrow. But uh, we we saw the zone. Definitely, we didn't see this kind of zone uh, because they are switching their they are switching zones and they're they're really really messing up the game and uh, in their favor. And we just need to be we just need to be focused and, and, and solid in what we are doing um, because uh, that's why they are great. That's why they are winning. That's why they are in the finals. You know, they're. They are messing the game in in their way, and they're doing that really good. I don't know how it's going to affect me. We're going to see tomorrow. Maybe we're going to have ten turnovers. Maybe we're going to have a ten points. We will see more assist. Thank you, guys. Pleasure, Nicole. Just to follow up what we were talking about the other night, what is the key to slowing Jokic? Guarding him as a team with all five guys. You know, he does everything so well. And um, we're gonna have to be in the gaps. We're gonna have to gang rebound. You know, we can't have defensive lapses, and we're just gonna have to get after it. I think at the end of the day, um, he's a major key, as DJ Khaled would say. And um, we're gonna have to lock in. You've talked many times in the last few weeks about the belief that you have in the room and, and everybody has together. Why aren't you guys though? a little surprised at what you've been able to accomplish in this run? Because we do it every single day and we know what we're capable of. You know, the outside individuals don't get the opportunity to see that. And I wish that y'all did because then you would see that the guys that we have on this team, on this roster, um, can really play some high level basketball. And we're going to stay confident because, like I said, we, we're in the, the grind every single day. Um, guys have been out of the lineup all year long. Guys step up, fill in, and, and do that job. So we're, we're never going to be surprised. Uh, Joe, third row. Joe Varden, The Athletic. Hey, Jimmy. Uh, it wasn't this season, but it was last year. It was here. Um, there was an incident between the Heat and the Nuggets, and you guys were so upset that you were in the hallway. And I understand. But what I'm asking is, are there any hard feelings uh, that linger from that night, and do you think they could spill out in the series? I don't think so. Um, I think there's a lot of like stuff about the whole situation that people don't understand, um, and I'll let that you know stay back there. But I, I don't think it has too much to do with anything. It's thing of the past, high level competition. But I will say, uh, I wasn't talking to Jokic. That wasn't my beef. So. Make sure you write that. And the individual who I was talking to definitely know who I was talking to. Melissa here in the front. Hey, Jimmy. Melissa Roland, Fox Sports. Obviously, you're the head of the snake. Um, through all of the adversity that you guys have faced this season, how have you personally taken it on as a responsibility to get the team to believe through all of it? I'm just, uh, I would like to say that I'm never rattled. Um, I'm, I'm very calm. I'm very consistent in everything that I do, whether it's before the game, after the game, during the game. And I think when, 
when my guys look at me like that, they follow suit in every single way. And uh, I love that about them because they're never shook. No matter what, we could be down. Um, people could think that we're out. And all of a sudden, it's like they're right back in this thing. And it's because we do the same thing every day. We love being around one another. We want to see each other succeed. We really do enjoy when each other play well. And um, we're going to continue to do that. Never going to get rattled. And we're going to see where we end up. Over here in the left, on the aisle. Uh, Jimmy, uh, Tomer Zarli from Clutch Points. Um, when did you realize you could be this kind of leader? At what age? And, and, and is there anyone who helped you develop this kind of confidence and leadership uh, that we've, we've seen the last couple uh, series? So many of my, my former teammates have shaped me into this quote-unquote leader that you think that you see in front of you today. Not perfect or anywhere near it in any way. Um, but I'm me and my style of leadership works here. Um, but more than anything, I, I, I got to get a shout to D-Wade because he had always told me about that culture here and how it fits who I am, what I'm about, and how I go about things. Um, and, I, you know, you see it everywhere. It, it really is a, a match made in heaven. I love it here, and I hope to be here. Rachel, back right. Jimmy, Nicola was up here saying there's not a player in this finals who didn't have those moments growing up of you know, 3-2-1 and scoring the winning basket to win a title. What was yours? Was yours on a blacktop, driveway? Who were you pretending to be? What do you remember? None of that. I was never, you know, that good at basketball growing up anyways. So me being in the NBA was so far out um, that, you know, I didn't, I didn't think I would make it this far. I'm glad that I am here and I have the opportunity to do that. Um, maybe I'll hit a game winner like D-Wade. I think that'd be... That'd be really good. I'm not standing on no tables, but uh, it'd be really cool to be D-Wade for a day. Was there an NBA Finals you remember from growing up that really had an effect on you? No, nah, we didn't have cable. Uh, next to Rachel. Uh, Brandon Crisell from KOA here in Denver. Going off the board a little. Jimmy, I'm not sure how many people know how much time you've spent in Denver, especially at Broncos games. Can you share with us a little bit about your relationship with Demarius Thomas and how yeah. bittersweet it is that he's obviously not going to be here cheering for you and maybe cheering for the Nuggets a little yeah. bit too? Um, that's my guy, my brother forever. Um, I miss him so much. And I used to spend so much time here with him, watching him be great. And um, he motivated me because his story is really, really incredible through everything that he's been through to make it um, and do what he did for the Broncos. I actually have a lot of love for this city. Um, and like I said, I, I miss that guy. Um, I wish he was here to sit courtside and watch me do my thing because we talked about this all the time. Maybe not, you know, Denver versus my team, but uh, just being able to watch me win a championship like he did. Right side on one, third row on the aisle. Hi, Jimmy. Stefan Ciccone from NBA Brazil, talking about another friend of you. We just got a message from Neymar right now saying that he's following the playoffs, he's supporting you and the Heat. How is it for you to receive a kind of uh, support like this right now? And uh, are you going to invite Neymar to the finals in Miami? Yes, um, he better be there. So, Ney, I know you're looking somewhere. Um, you better be there. But that's, that's my guy, too. Um, you know, Part of my routine on game days and off days is I, I watch all types of sports of people who inspire me to be great. He's one of them. So I've probably seen each one of his highlight videos on YouTube way, way too many times. Um, Sasha, tennis, um, Carlito, tennis, like you go down to Serena, everybody. Um, I just, I love greatness in any way that you view it. And um, he's obviously a close friend of mine, so I pay attention to him a lot. But with him in my corner, I think I'm going to be okay. Last two, Om and Young Mooks. Hey, Jimmy. Uh, Om Young Mooks, like ESPN. Uh, you talked about how you spent a lot of time here in Denver. Have you felt the altitude before? How does it impact you? And do you do anything to adapt? Nah, I'll just be drinking some water, listen to some music. I think that's the formula. You just got to listen to music, drink water, drink wine, play spades, and dominoes. What, what are you going to listen to before game one? For game one, um, probably Dermot Kennedy, honestly. He be, he be having me grooving. So Morgan Wallen, too, him too. Luke Combs, Lauren Hill. He goes, you know, Kirk Franklin. I, uh, you never know, but it's going to be something. Spice Girls. <laughs>
I don't know how to follow that one. Um, two questions. One, Jimmy, how's your ankle? You injured it against the Knicks, and you tweaked it a little bit in Game Seven. Are you 100 percent? Are you close to 100 percent? Or is that a look that tells me you're going to lie right now? No, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to say that nobody cares. You don't either. Um, and I'm still expected to, to do my job at a high level if I take it forward, which I will. Um, and we're going to be okay. We're going to we're going to get the job done. Um, bum ankle or not. And I'm not taking a follow-up, so don't do that. You're not taking a follow-up? Nope. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you anyway. <laughs> Boston, you made the adjustments late in that series against Boston with, with their length when they switched on Al and they switched on uh, Robert Williams III. What type of challenges defensively does Denver pose compared to Boston that maybe you don't have to worry about? Honestly, I haven't even paid attention to it just yet. I'm not going to lie to you. I got a lot of time between after this media session and the game to really lock in on what I'm going to do to help this team win on both sides of the ball. Um, but I'm going to play the right way. If I'm not open, I'm going to pass the ball. I'm going to try to collapse the defense and, and create help, kick it to my open shooters, um, play basketball the right way, and know that this team way of playing basketball is going to win it for us. Answered your question, too. <laughs>